Right, so if you've been following my slow accumulation of parts for this 8 inch build, you know that so far we've got the iFlight 8 inch freestyle frame and we've got the Racer Star and Team Alter 2514 KV motors. So today we're going to talk about the ESC that I'm going to use which comes in two parts. So the first is a bag with cables in it and also a few unusual bits and a capacitor which is 35 volt 470 UF Rubicon and then I opened up the ESC and when I looked at the photographs of this I thought there was the option to basically get a flight controller with it and this is the Racer Star Reach Up 100 amp ESC which is obviously a 4-in-1 ESC and this one's rated up to 8S but you can see this bit on the top isn't a flight controller it's actually part of the ESC and they basically connect together via these pin connectors and I've had this a, f a few days and I've been kind of sat there rumming and ahhing and thinking about what I'm going to say about this so let's just talk about the ESC itself, the main part so obviously if this is going to be rated up to 100 amps per channel, 400 amps in total A, you're going to have to be getting the world's best battery to get up to that level and B, it's going to have to be a really, really solid ESC. On initial impressions of this one are that it's probably going to last to the capabilities that they're claiming. If you notice, we've got this completely flat back, which is always nice. And this back feels like aluminium. So essentially the whole bottom of the ESC is one giant heat sink and then on the top you can see the usual business and we've got two analog current sensors here and this guy is obviously BL32 up to D shot 1200 and then on this other board we have essentially the connector and additional FETs or capacitors with this connector on the bottom and again this guy is completely flat as well and the connections on this this isn't there's nothing fancy on this particular ESC it's got no regulators or anything like that so you've essentially got ground currents and then your signal wires but I'm guessing the idea behind this and certainly their blurb seems to support that is that instead of when you get a normal 4-in-1 ESC you kill it mid-flight and then you've got to buy another one I th I'm thinking reading between the, the lines that the idea of this guy is that these parts will be replaceable but of course like all things Banggood and Racer Star you won't be able to probably buy the replacement parts unless people buy these things because um, they don't stop replacements unless you know there's a market to do so in terms of the way it connects, it kind of pushes together like so and it allows itself some play almost as if the component inside are, there's no sort of stiffness to that. I'm not, I'm not damaging any components by having this rocking motion so I wonder whether it was purposely designed to be like that and Somebody somewhere watching this video is now saying I'm never going to buy that because it's got these um, connectors which can sometimes break. But it also comes with these really sort of firm but rubbery spacers which sit between the corners. And when you clamp down, 
there's no sort of play in it but there's still a little bit of vibration damping dampening so hopefully you're not gonna end up breaking the connector so the whole thing looks like somebody's actually thought about how this thing should work and how it will actually survive in practice and I'm this is all off the top of my head I mean of course what I'll be doing like always is putting this into my build and then letting you guys know if it survives or not but I kind of I don't know what to make of it I love the flat bottom and the, the, the bottom part feels really solid um, and chunky this top part I can only presume exists to give additional capacitance but also to allow this flat bottom and I don't know whether I like it or not if I'm entirely honest it's just different and I think without putting it into a build and seeing how it fits together it's going to be really hard to sort of give an honest opinion on it I mean if I take this iFlight frame I'm going to have tons of space in this guy with its 35mm standoffs to run this and a flight controller on top and the fact it sits flush is obviously going to save you quite a bit of space but then of course you're immediately going to eat into it by having this additional connector or should I say this additional thickness in terms of the connector I'm not really worried about it because it feels like if you get this guy in and you build your stack well and you really tighten down before you go up into your next layer with your flight controller I'd imagine you'd really have to be going some to break this or you'd have to be really unlucky to break it and if they do sell this top portion then it should be pretty easily repairable so yeah, really, really unusual ESC. I mean, it's the first 100 amp ESC I've ever used. Um, and as I said, I only asked for it for review just because I wanted a big, chunky, reliable ESC. And I figured, as this one is a pretty decent price, I think it retails for about 49 quid, although there's a discount code, which if I can find it, I'll link below. But at that price, there isn't a huge amount to touch it if it reaches its um, its rated 100 amp and it certainly seems to feel like it should do so I'll be sticking mine in my iFlight 8 inch frame and I haven't spent a huge amount of time thinking about what I'm going to do with this guy yet because I'm sort of just getting my components together because the ESC is rated up to 8S, I'm kind of tempted to do what somebody mentioned, which was to basically join two four cell batteries together and create one bigger, in this case, um, 8S battery. But at the same time, I think it's going to be overkill. And the motors on this guy I can't help but feel would be much better at home either on basically a super powered 6S rig or you know running 4S um, with a big battery and using them for long range so I'm sort of between minds as to what to do um, it would have been nice if this guy had had a regulator on it because it would have made the other choices of components the flight controller um, a little bit more flexible because it hasn't, I'm going to have to use a flight controller that will take, or uh, that will take direct LiPo in inputs, um, which is 6S is fine and common. But if I go up to 8S, there aren't a huge amount of of options out there. Um, the CL Racing F7 is probably the one I'm most familiar with, which claims up to 8S. Um, but I'm then going to have to run all the com other components. Um, cameras and VTXs etc off the flight controller because none of those components are rated for 8S so the 8S thing 
seems like it might be a little bit of a bugbear, but at the same time, I kind of kind of fancy it. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, so yeah, so that's it for the components for this guy. Um, as I said, flight controller, I'm probably going to go CL Racing F7 or possibly the Matek one. Um, VTX, etc. I'll probably play safe and use a 5 volt one so I can run it from the flight controller. And let's see what this guy comes out to be. Probably in the not too distant future, I'll have some sort of build or build overview, and then we'll see how this guy does on 6S um, and 4S, and possibly um, if I get round to it and build my own packs, 8S. So that's it, guys. Review of the Racer Star Reach Up 100 amp PSC. Which initial thoughts are if you can live with this connector and the sturdy rubber soft mounts it comes with could be a really good option for superpower quads. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye bye.